did you have to? Look, he's soaking wet. What do you see? Wait till you all see this. I currently have Monaco on the boob, so it's not really the most ideal scenario in the world. So we have, I don't know if you can see, the world's biggest wet puddle because Milano jumped up onto the toilet, spun the water tap around this way so it was on the floor and water is everywhere. Everywhere. Because he wanted the toothpaste. That's, that's, that's all. Like, oh my, it is literally everywhere. Can you, can you see? I don't know if you can really see. So now I need to go get the mop. Come on, out of here before it runs. Yep, starting to run. Like well, what a nightmare that was. I had to stop feeding Monaco. So then obviously he wasn't very impressed. So he was crying. Milano is literally absolutely soaked still because I had to just mop it up and then feed, carry on feeding Monaco because obviously hunger comes before him being wet because look, does he look bothered to you? What are you doing? You playing with the tap? Did you get water everywhere? Did you? I think you did. So it was starting to like run out the bathroom and obviously you don't want to warp the, be the, the doors or the the bathroom cabinet so I had to like quickly wipe it up it's still pretty wet so I'm gonna it's like not running now but I'm gonna finish feeding him mop it up and then get him changed so welcome to the weekend vlog with life of two under two <laughs> what an entrance what a Friday and um, the building work is still going on which is good and um, also Mr Mary will probably bring you around the back either this evening or tomorrow and show you the progress off it. It's looking really well. And then hopefully next week they are starting on the front, but I don't know, I think it might even be the week after because the laundry room needs the roof put on yet, um, tiled, plastered and plastered on the outside, but we'll see. Um, sometimes it sounds bigger than what it is. So hopefully it won't take too long. Um, but yeah, this is our weekend vlog with two under two and there's not really much we can do over the weekend because we're all kind of locked up, not like fully locked up again, um, but like locked up a good bit more. Bars and restaurants and stuff are closed and um, we can go to the shopping centre but only until six o'clock. So yeah, I'm not really sure what we're going to be getting up to, but we are still going to make it super family fun. I do know I need to tidy the playroom today whenever the boys nap. That is a must. Welcome back to another baking special with Oso Megan, Oso Milano, and Oso Mister. Murray. You look sound good without the Murray bed. No, it's because you said, ah. Uh, yeah, you did it. Mister. So, so Milano is now back up for baking. We basically bribed him with the baking stuff, <laughs> and uh, yeah, everything is now good in the household. What are we gonna do, Mummy? We're gonna do turkeys today. And what you basically do is pour the mix in the bowl, add a bit of water, and then put balls on the tray. But we were gonna roll out and cut. It would yeah, be we're good. gonna roll it out, cut, and we're gonna add coral. Yeah, just a little bit more. A little bit of e colours, you know, e, e, what they call them? E numbers. E numbers. So we're gonna do Mickey in purple. We're gonna do the star in blue and the heart in pink. Yeah? Yeah. Shall we open it, Milano? Shall I get the water? Yeah. So what do we think of them? <laughs> mm, not right. No. I'm going to make it my aim this year to be able to make cookies because I would love to be that mum that could make cookies. But we'll put them in the oven anyway for 10 minutes and see what happens. It went so wrong, but we'll see. So I'm just thinking, oh, so make them worry. Mm. What if now we get a knife and we cut them into the shapes that we want them to be? Because let me show you guys. <laughs> I mean, that one kind of looks like Mickey Mouse. Your one looks like a heart, that one anyway. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. This one, much. this one looks more like a nipple. <laughs> it does though, look. It's joined onto this one. It's kind of like, <laughs> he found it funny. Did you find it funny? He did not find that funny. So I managed to cut them and kind of save them. <laughs> How funny. Can't say they're my best, but you know what? I'm gonna make it my mission of 
2021 to be a good cookie maker. Good morning, everyone. Hey, guys. We are going for a little walk because it's... Oh, shit, he's not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> what? It's going to be one of those game show hosts. Behind door <laughs> number... number one. Yeah, because he can wear glittery clothes doing that as well. Behind door number two. So we are going on a little family walk, aren't we? We are. It's Saturday morning. It is. And we thought we would walk down to the beach uh -huh. and then walk around the shops because the shops close at six now. So like... Yeah. Nice. And I think they might close next week, to be honest. They'll be closed next week as well. So, so we're just going to go for some memories. Really yeah. Nice. Making memes. Making memes. <laughs> Around the shops. Around the shops. <laughs> While we can. And look at this little one. Look how cosy he is. I put him in. This is like a thermal bloody suit. It's amazing. Um, I put him in this instead of putting a blanket on him because sometimes I just feel like blankets get all. Did you buy this for him or did Milano have this when he was a baby? No, I bought it for him. Sure, Milano was a summer baby. Because see, when we went to Disneyland, Milano would have needed that. He had a snowsuit. Oh, did he? Do you remember the white and gold one from yeah, River yeah, Island? Yeah, but it wasn't like that, though. No, it wasn't as snuggly looking. But yeah, we're going on a little family walk the market. Some people have written books, some have a great look that covers the magazines for kids who are 17. But I don't know what to do. Staring into the blue sky and just waiting for a sign. Some they are certain of what awaits them when it all ends But I don't know what will happen to me Will I be remembered in a century? Or will I be forgotten like dust in the wind? Or the talk of the town that we are living in? Well, I don't know, I don't know How could I know what lies ahead of me? Am I part of a Someone who's half their age Reading from a torn out page From a book filled with lies But I don't know what to do I'm staring into the blue sky And just waiting for a sign Some they are certain Of what awaits them When it all ends But I don't know What will happen to me Will I be remembered in a century Oh, will I be forgotten Like dust I was never the one to write up a song for just anyone I, I was always the one to find myself lost in old conversations Oh, cause I've always been told that things will unfold if you keep on waiting But then you came along and proved me all wrong I was so mistaken. Hello everyone, welcome to our little sit down Q&A Coffee time with the ice Only I mean, we haven't got coffee because we had one we had to start on our walk, so, so just just pretend, like, like, you can't have too much caffeine in one day. No, I've already got heart palpitations from. Yeah, Megan said she had heart palpitations from heart palpitations from <laughs> palpitations. <laughs> from the um, I got a double shot. Oh, you got a double shot. I feel like I can really feel it. Did you really? Mm -hmm. So should we just let everybody know, all the viewers at home know, mm -hmm. that if you're wondering why I'm looking a bit scruffier than usual, it's because <laughs> Megan accidentally. Apparently, accidentally, throwing my clippers in the bin. I'm just going to point out there that Jake put his clippers in the bin. So basically, <laughs> I was running really late for, well, it was the day that we went to the Montessori school, mm. we went for the interview for Milano, and I was running really late, and obviously I needed to trim my beard, and I trimmed my beard, and I didn't have time to clean it all, so I just thought I'd wrap them up, put them in the bin. The bin was completely empty, it was clean, nobody was using that bathroom that day anyway, so it was fine. Like I was going to come back later on in the afternoon and sort it out. But I came back in the afternoon and cleaned the bathrooms, and whenever I cleaned the bathrooms, I emptied the bins. But there was nothing in that bin other than the clipper. And it was wrapped up in like stuff. Yeah, it was wrapped up for a reason, to not be thrown away. Who puts something in the bin that's not meant to be in the bin? I thought they'd broken, that's what I thought. 
And if you hear Monica in the background staring, it's normal. Actually, he's quite a he's quite a vocal sleeper, isn't he? He is a vocal sleeper. See, whenever he was born. He was quite vocal, wasn't yeah. he, as well? Like, whenever they had him in an ICU, they thought there was something wrong, but then but they just, just realised he just moans when he sleeps. He just moans, they thought he was in pain of some sort. Um, do you hear him? He just does that when he's sleeping. Like, he's completely asleep, he's fine, there's nothing wrong with him. So, don't worry if it's you like hear It's like a snore. It is a bit like a snore. So, we're going to do a little Q&A. We asked you over on Instagram what you wanted to know. Um, so, here it goes. My shoe Sorry. size is a nine and a half UK. No one asked, no one asked that. Which was harder, going from zero to one babies or one to two babies? In my opinion, mm -hmm. going from zero to one babies was mm -hmm. harder than having the second child. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would say I would have to agree. Mm -hmm. What I find the hardest is not going from one to two or zero to one, it's going from having a baby to having a toddler. <laughs> Toddler life is very difficult. A lot of people talk to you about having a baby, and some people are asked very difficult to have a baby. The sleepless nights. The difficult part no. comes when they hit like 16 to 24 months. Yeah. Like that's the hard part. And people yeah. say terrible too. It's, not it's terrible, time. like starts at 16 months yeah. and it goes on for like two years. Yeah. Maybe that's what it means. Terrible two for two years. Maybe. Hope not. No, it's, no, get, it's yeah. getting much better already. Yeah, yeah it's, it's much better. What is it, 19 months now? Yeah, 19 months now, and he is starting to... Yeah, he just like started like terrible too, is a little bit early. I think so, and like the tantrums were insane, but even them have got much better. Yeah. Like, like, he, he, like he threw he, one on the floor for... He threw himself on the floor, and then like bang it, like a th literally forehead on the floor, <laughs> banging against the floor, and I look at him like... constant Why are you doing that? But he only does that now, maybe like a twice a day now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not twice a week now, yeah, but before yeah. he was doing it every single day. Yeah, like probably like... Twice a day. More than twice a day. Uh, just every team, every time you have a dentron. Yeah. Oh. Is it recording? It's still recording. I have to give them a little nod as well. It was like a little <laughs> intro. Interval. <laughs> yeah, but the definitely the two, the, the problem having one baby was harder. Basically. Because you just don't want to do it. Yeah, like, like just the Even nappies. Even like now, like, like, no, we would be like freaking out if Milano had been like staring and we would have been like, oh. Like, I remember the first nappy that I put on Milano and I was looking for the double-sided sellotape that came off of the wings of the nappy and then I have like, after like 10 minutes of doing that, realised that nappies are Velcro, they're not sellotape. <laughs> like, I thought it was sticky. And like, we know what's... Whatever it meant, it's like very good. We know what's common as well, like, we know that like, the wee phases all pass, whereas like you just think that it's gonna last forever. Yeah. You know, like I know I know that whenever Monaco will like go through his tantrums, that it's it, it really isn't that long. But whenever you're in the moment for the very first time, it's like, is this my life now? <laughs> so to answer the question, <laughs> yeah, is it's easier to go one to two babies than it yeah. is from zero to one babies. Yeah. Like you've already got a handle on what it is that you're doing, like just silly little things like food. Like you, I don't know, you know, it, it, how how many times do you have to cut up a banana to get yeah. it to a six month old? Like yeah. you kind of know. Yeah, you know. You so know. yeah, once you're in, once you're in the, the swing of it, you're kind of in the swing yeah. of it. Yeah. Two, three, five, ten. You know. Big poo. Question number two. How was Monaco's birth? Um, so for me it was a struggle. <laughs> the struggle was real. The struggle for me was real. I mean, I fainted, you yeah, know, I, I had the doctors it. around me. Yeah. Um, other than that, you know, I, I, they should have probably given me some more medication. You had a bit of a hospital stay. I had a hospital stay, you know. Because of your faint. Because of my faint. So for me it was, for me it was, it wasn't an easy ride, let's say. Um, no, Monaco's birth was very different to Milano's birth. Very, very different. Like Milano's, I, even though I went into labour like very naturally with Milano, and then it was like an emergency section as such, um, it was still like all very chilled. And like the recovery, like, of course, it's always sort of stand after a section, but it was still like fine. And after like a week, I was completely fine. 
This time around it took four weeks for me to feel more normal. They didn't give me as much medication. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. I think like a lot of the reason why it didn't feel normal was obviously because Monaco was born during the COVID yeah. pandemic. I think and it was just a lot it was very different it was very very different like the first time we was was able to i know it sounds silly but laugh and joke with the the doctors and the nurses and and like the the lady that gave you the drugs the last time like we had a good laugh with her and she like just kept kept bringing you drugs all the time and like this time there was like they're only allowed in your room certain times they missed a lot of my drugs like they didn't bring around my drugs and uh, and that was because Monaco was an ICU and because they was only allowed around at certain times into the room because of COVID, which makes I understand they have to like limit the amount of contact that they have with, they with the patient. They should the drugs not set them. They should just leave the drugs on the side. Mm-hmm. Like they're only tablets. Or, or they knew where I was, they knew I was in ICU, or I wasn't down at the cafe, but I just really, really Went did. to Zara a couple of times. <laughs> I just really did struggle this time with the pain and the afterbirth contractions the second time around, let me tell you, I have never felt pain like it in my life. Yeah. And breastfeeding was a wee bit more sore this time, but it wasn't like I got severe pain with Milano in the beginning, it was just the, the nipple was more sore this time, but it went away quickly. But then we got home and I feel like the recovery at home took a lot longer, but I think it's just because we had a toddler and it was Christmas. All, all of that, so yeah, Monaco's birth was more difficult than the last. A lot more difficult than the Still fine, though, still good. He's the odd. Yeah, everything went well. I would do it again. It wasn't like traumatic, obviously, Jake Fint. It was funny. Like, I'll like. tell you the reason why I fainted, okay? Oh, well, here's the I fainted because we went in at like 12 30, like noon, like daytime, and then we didn't have the baby till like eight yeah. at night and I hadn't had any food. <laughs> like they didn't feed me that whole time. I guess who else wasn't allowed any food. Yeah, but she was on drugs. No, I went all natural. I like. wasn't on drugs. They left me all that time with contractions on a monitor. I didn't get any drugs. I was patiently waiting for the drugs. Um, can you tell me how I could breastfeed my next baby? Because she couldn't breastfeed her last two babies. I can't really, obviously, give too much advice on this, but, but from Jake my... But is a breast activist, shall we say, uh, breastfeeding. Breast, breast is best, I think, but <laughs> um, the only thing that I can say from, from, in my opinion, that i seen from an outside perspective that helped was the nipple shield. Yeah, yeah. The definitely. nipple shield helped. Definitely. If you have a nipple shield, it does be better, like, because no matter who you are, your nipples are going to get sore and that just helps. Like it doesn't mean you're going to need it forever, but just in the sore days in the beginning, just put it on. Like there's no shame in using the nipple shield. You never get all like, it's like chapped. It's like putting um, the teat of, uh, of a bottle, mm-hmm. like of a Tommy Tippy bottle, on your nipple. Onto your nipple. Like it just seems more... No. I don't use them now. No, I know you don't use them now, but in the beginning you use yeah, them. And it just, just, it just helps, it just helps the whole thing. It's just sore, you know, like it's like a lot of skin on skin, a lot of rubbing, like basically it's just a lot of rubbing. So definitely invest in one of them. Invest in a hacker so that your other boob is... Um, Cleansing its milk out. Like, yeah, getting its milk out as well. Exprimating. 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 So the milk's falling out of the other boob correctly at the same time. Falling out. Yeah. And lots of skin on skin contact. And just always put them on the boob. If they moan, put them on the boob. If they do anything, put them on the boob. And after a couple of weeks, it all regulates out, doesn't it? Best advice for breastfeeding, don't give up. Don't give up. And your milk isn't going to come in straight away. And that's okay. Your baby is fine. You know. Yeah. So Antonio, our midwife, See, my brain works a little bit differently, so I need to kind of know how things work. And Antonio, our midwife, he's basically said to us that a baby is born with like a lunch box on their back full of food. Mm-hmm. A baby can, can give itself its own nutrition for five days, for five days um, and then that's usually the amount of time that it takes for... But his wife the, was seven and his baby was still fine because like mm-hmm. there still does be stuff that comes out, it's just colostrum. So don't, honestly, like don't worry. And your baby is going to drop in weight, that yeah. is normal. Mm-hmm. Um, and but the, doc- they the doctors are always so like, oh, I don't know, so like 
thing about the baby dropping in weight. Like, mm-hmm. Every single baby drops in weight. Mm-hmm. From when they're born, it drops in weight. Yeah. As long as it puts the weight back on gradually yeah, right. after that, it's fine. Like Monaco, Monaco yeah. dropped very low, and they was all worried about that. And he is bigger than the And they wanted to give him formula straight away. Mm-hmm. Like they was really pushing it. So I had to just tell the doctor or the nurse, the, the what, midwife, the midwife. I was just like telling that there's no oh, rush. Yeah. Like, <laughs> why are you in such a rush? Yeah. Like the child is fine, he's yeah. not starving. It he's wasn't fine. hungry, it wasn't crying. She, she like made the bottle of formula and I was pushing it yeah, into his so mouth. And I was like, excuse me, that's my child. Yeah. Like, can you stop doing that? Mm-hmm. And, and you uh, were like, just give the mother a minute. Yeah, yeah, because like... They wouldn't let me try. They wouldn't let her try it. And like I said... But it was my second time and knew what I was doing. Yeah, best advice for breastfeeding mm-hmm. is don't stick give up, it. stick to it. But then the pediatrician was like, you shouldn't be giving them a formula. Yeah. Just I, think, I think doctors, nurses, Nobody is, although they may be experts in their field, nobody is 100% correct in anything. No one knows your baby. No one knows your baby better than you, mm-hmm. and nobody's 100% correct in anything. Mm-hmm. And you just have to see how it goes. Obviously, if your baby is losing lots and lots and lots of weight, mm-hmm. like to a dramatically yeah. low level, then of course. And of course, you need to dream, but like, you know, you know your baby, and just don't give up. Don't give up. Question number. And for the men out there, because like there was oh, yeah. there was another ma- there was another so when Monica was born there was another baby born that was both nice a year and like the dad was so the uh, the other the other baby's dad was like so on top of the model mm-hmm. for the breastfeeding mm-hmm. like he was asking a million and one questions to the nurse like it's a natural thing like you, you, you just put the baby on the nipple or on the nipple shield onto the nipple you and just give it some time. Yeah, you need to let the mummy figure out. Like the daddy needs to help if she wants the like if she uh, it, it was, wants the help. But I wanted to go over there and just say to him, give her a minute, give her a second. I go sit down. Yeah. Go just for a coffee. Just, just, just leave. let her try. You know. So the first time it was yeah. the first time it was a first baby. It was a first time trying to breastfeed. And it is a lot easier the second time round because you do know what you're doing. What you gain is our two to one. So question number four, how many homes do you own in Spain? Okay, so we own three homes in Spain, mm-hmm. and was there not a follow-up to that question? And which, which is going to count as two questions, okay. would you ever move back to the UK? Um, I, I never ever lived in the UK, so there's no moving back for me. No. I, I would, it would be like moving to a different country, mm-hmm. which I don't know, but I'm happy here. I moved here whenever I was four, so can't see me ever moving back. Well, I'm not moving back without you. <laughs> <laughs> but no. In that case, I am moving. I'm moving too <laughs> The lifestyle here for kids is too good, isn't it? Yeah. Someone asked, why am I from in Northern Ireland? I'm from Belfast. It's quite, is what it is. Okay, so that was a little sick, sicky interval, so there was a little bit of sick, so that's all wiped up now and clean, so you're all good, good, yeah. yeah. So, next question. next question. What would we have called Milano if he wasn't Milano, and Monaco if he wasn't Monaco? Like, boy and a girl names. Um, so, Milano, we was going to have called him either Giovanni mm-hmm. or Hugo. And then there was too many Hugos at the time. <gasps> yeah, so, story about the Hugo. So, Hugo, Hugo was probably like... It was number one contender, right? And then we went to the 5D scan place, and this is where like, they print out the mold of the baby of the fetus. And the lady said to us, what, what's your child's name? And we said, Hugo. And she basically grunted. Yeah. And I was like, what's wrong? What's the grunt about, love? And she was Excuse like, me. everyone's called Hugo. She was like, oh, you don't know how many Hugos I've had recently. We were like. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't you be printing nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no Hugo here. <laughs> because, right, we didn't want, like, Milano to be in class and then, like, the teacher would be like, Hugo. And, and then, like, like <laughs> so, so we was like, not Hugo. So yeah. then we went for a phase of, we wasn't too sure. And I loved Giovanni. Giovanni. I didn't. I didn't like Giovanni. Then I was like, why don't we start an M theme? <laughs> an M theme. So then we started looking for... Um, obviously, we like the Italian names and we like the Italian yeah, theme. French, yeah. So we was looking at um, Italian boys' names that look on uh, begins with M, and Milano was one of them, yeah. and we really liked it, and yeah. that was it, really. That was it. And, and obviously, Milano comes from the city, which is Milano. Yeah, and um, we were gonna 
Colum River if he was a girl, do you remember? Mm -hmm. But obviously we find out so well that it was just like, mm -hmm. he wasn't. River's a nice name. Yeah, be a girl. And then yeah. this little one, he was going to be a little, no was he always, he was always going to be a Monaco if we were having another boy. I said that whenever we had Monaco. Yeah. And if he was a girl, we can't tell you what it is, you. just in case just we have not had any more children. So that's that question answered. Next question. Are we going to have any more babies? Did you hear that burp? Did you get I am the burp king. Are we going to have any more babies? We don't know, basically. I would have ten. I'm not planning to have any more. <laughs> <laughs> but... I'm not planning to have any more. see what happens. But no. Wait. Megan always gets away, so there will be like 17, 17 of you running around with everything. 17 baby ends? No. We honestly don't know. At the minute, no. If I convince Jake, yes. No, it's not even convincing me. It's just, it's just like with Milano. Toddler life is hard. Toddler life is hard. With Milano, obviously, as you guys know, our followers, we also had a miscar well, miscarriage. We had a minor pregnancy mm -hmm. with the first baby. Mm -hmm. So. With Milano, obviously, it was 100% planned, planned, planned. Mm -hmm. With Monaco, we decided, you know, that we would have another baby, have but it wasn't. Like, it wasn't planned, though. Like, it wasn't like when we had Milano, like we was very much a routine of following ovulation schemes and everything else. And you had your yeah, ovulation schemes. Yeah, but we followed. We knew I was ovulating with him as well. Yeah, but it wasn't as. No, it wasn't as like. Regimental. Yeah, and then like now, obviously, if if there's going to be no ovulation, if we have a cuddle and the seed is planted, then there's a cuddle with me. So that's that's that. Next question. That um, that theory was brought into play by Jodie Watts. I loved her explanation of it, it the cuddle. Very, yeah, it was very good. I like it. I like it too. This one's for you, Jake. If okay. you weren't in real estate, what would you be doing? If I wasn't in real estate, what would I be doing? Well, he used to be a barber. He used to be a barber. And a scuba diver, and a builder, and a model. I was a professional model for a good while, like. Right? And what else were you? Honestly, you don't want to see the pictures. Then. Oh my god, if I can find them, I'm going to put one here. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I, would, I, would, I would like to have thought that I would have continued my career in football. I know, it would have been very difficult, but I'm not saying okay. I would have been no, a top tier professional no, footballer. if you weren't a, a real estate guy now, you would have had to do that from the get go, like whenever you were a child. Oh, what do you mean if I, if, I, if I just lost, well, lost the office? No, like if you weren't in real estate. Like, well, as of tomorrow? No, because you know how you were a barber and then you changed to real estate? So, but like if you changed your career, mm. if you weren't in real estate, what would you do? When you're thinking, I'm going to undress them. I can't answer. Can't answer. I can't answer that. If I wasn't a real estate agent right now, I would definitely be an overthinker. I would definitely be an overthinker. Do that anyway. But, um, don't know. I guess I would probably have something to do with like, I don't know, financial advice. Financial advice. Okay. Like I'd become like a, a financial advisor. Okay, I can tell. I would tell people how to manage their money, and I'd tell them to invest it into real estate. <laughs> I can tell you, he would be bored of that in 0.25 seconds. Another one for you, Jake. Mm -hmm. Are you annoyed that Milano looks like Megan? I'm not annoyed at all. I mean, um, Megan is the most beautiful woman that I've ever laid eyes upon. Ever and if the ever did see so far. Oh, I like what you've done yeah, there. Right, um, but uh, if, if Milano and Monaco even look a fraction of beauty of them all, well, then they are going to be good looking boys. And I must admit, Milano is a replica. <laughs> yes. And Monaco is a replica of Milano whenever he was first born. Yeah. With dark hair and the darker eyes. And then it just all changed. Yeah. So I don't know whether they might want to swap the child. I don't know where she takes them whenever they hit to that 12 months. She like goes and pops them somewhere and takes a different one. Um, so yeah, so it's just going to look just like them anyway. Yeah. I can't wait to see them like grow up together. What do they call it? Just the sperm donor, right? Yeah. Just the sperm yeah. donor. If you could, like if we were to have babies again, would we do the two under two or would we have a bigger age fit? No, um, two under two is best. I feel like 
Um, from my own experience, I have um, several brothers and sisters <laughs> of all different age ages. I think like one of my <laughs> oldest. <laughs> so I think like I'm like I'm 26, right? Mm-hmm. I think like I have brothers double my age. Um, obviously, that must have been very difficult for my parents to have had, you know, 20 odd years of oh, no time. of no children, no nappies or anything like that, and then boom. Nice. Sleepless nights, nappies, mm-hmm. children in the bed with you, and yeah. bottles. Like I'm guessing, I don't yeah. know if I was breastfed or not. I believe the closer you can have them together, the better. Like I know, so, it's, I know it sounds silly, but like just get it over and done with. Not get it over and done with, but like you know. No, but it's nice for them to grow up together. Grow up together, of course, mm-hmm. but like pram life will end at the same time. Yeah. Nappy life will end more or less at the same time. Like it will, it, it will be like. So do you think we ever had any? Or would we just do it in a bit? So if we ever had any more, she'd have to be pregnant within the next like three or four weeks. Well, no, because I wasn't even pregnant the next three or four weeks with Milano. Yeah, but this, is, this is the third. <laughs> Don't be sad. Next question. That was it. That was the end of questions. Does she want to look one up? Yeah, I want to look at some questions. Okay. Oh, there's 204 questions. <laughs> That's very usual. You're, you're quite big these days, I know. I forget, I forget who I'm married to. Okay, so this question is for you, Megan. So I liked how you found all the questions for me so you didn't have to answer any, so now I'm finding them for you, okay? Is there anything that you would have changed from the age of having the children? I would you have wanted to have been older or younger having the children? I guess that's what the question is. Is that what it is? So like, so how old would you whenever you had no eye? I was 24. 24. So do you think you would have preferred to have had Milano at, you know, younger or older? Because some people, I'd say... Yeah, some I'd people say, say that they wish they had a waited. Yeah, because I've I see, I seen like a, a divide, especially with people who I um, hang around with, I guess, uh, of in work and stuff. Oh. There's certain people, especially Spanish culture, <laughs> they seem to have babies like Later. 30 plus <laughs> and then I wonder what, what would you have done? Well, obviously I wanted a baby at least a year before that because we went through yeah. them all. So if I could have, I wouldn't. Well, I say I wouldn't have had my mother pregnancy, but I feel like that's really unfair to say because I feel like my mother pregnancy did make me the mummy. But you are mm-hmm. Definitely. So, so therefore you wouldn't change anything? No, I probably wouldn't change anything because I love my little life and I say to Jake all the time, thank you so much for making me a mummy because I really love being the mummy and I feel so blessed that I'm able to be the mummy that I can be. You know what I mean? So no, I wouldn't change anything. So 24 is the perfect age to have a baby, you say? Yeah, it was good age. Yeah, yeah, I think it's like a good age too. Because it still gives you time to have more or not, and you still have a life at either end. Yeah, you know? no, I, th- I, I feel like... I don't want to wait now until 30 to have another. Yeah, I, I guess it does depend on, you know, for example, like I didn't go to uni, I didn't go to college, I didn't really go to school, and mm-hmm. um, so, you know, things so progressed a lot quicker for me mm-hmm. anyway, and I think the same with you. Well, we got married at what? 22? Yeah. Or was that? 21 years. Was I only 21? 22. Yeah. Was I only 21? Yeah, you was 18, I was 19. No, yeah, but I just turned 22. Oh, because it was March the 26th, yeah. we got married on the 1st, March the 5th. Yeah, so yeah. I just turned 22. So yeah, I wouldn't change anything, would you? Would I change anything? Mm. He's getting hungry. He's getting hungry. Um, so yeah, so anything you would change? Nothing, anything you would change? Nothing, you know. Thank you so much for coming into Q and A Coffee Time yeah. with the Oso Fan. Yeah. And uh, might do another we, one next week if we, you enjoyed it. We are going to go now and wake up Milano, mm-hmm. and we need to go food shopping. Food shopping, quite fun. Oh, I really do. And you need fed. He needs fed. Let's go. Let's go. Brush your hair, Milano. You brushing it? Oh yes, brushing my hair, my my golden locks. So we're just getting ready because we are going to the supermarket, aren't we? Well, I know he's on outfit three of the day. Is this outfit three? <sighs> he's going through outfits like crazy at the minute. Monaco is having some oh, more boob I again. Sit here, you know. I know. I'm, I found a little spot. The sun's coming in. I could have a little it, siesta. It's, it's just, it's just, you know, nice on my face. 
Yeah, I'm just happy here, you know. Go on, hit daddy with the brush. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's go. Let's get going. We are back in the angle of the arm. The Oso angle. This is actually going to be known as the Oso angle. <laughs> in the car. So we are now off food shopping. But we're going to go get an eye test, which I have had since being pregnant with Monaco and I googled it and it's a thing. Sometimes whenever you're pregnant it deteriorates your eyesight. Yeah, and I've just got Munchausen disease and if there's something wrong with her I want there to be something wrong with me. So he wants an eye test too, but basically this eye, I feel like there's cream in it all the time. That's what it's like a wee bit like blurry and I've been getting like a few headaches and things like that. So I was like, I'm just going to go get it checked out. So that's where we're off to, and then we're going food shopping. And also, Mr. Murray wanted to jump on the bandwagon of an eye test. Why not, you know? Whilst in Rome. When in Rome. Guys, we've been told off about the video and in here before, but we, out of all of the kids, there was just a lot of kids, but there's a lot of you, right? And opened up all new deals. We chose right. We did. We are on the conveyor. We don't normally choose right. No, but we are on the conveyor. Oh, and the opticians was closed, so we're going to have to go to another one. Yeah, we're going to go to the other one. So we literally zoomed around we'll here. We'll probably get there and they'll be like, oh, the optician's not here today. Don't even. <laughs> and we're running out of time because of the curfew. Let's go. Happy Sunday, everyone. But not happy pool day. Show them what's happened to the pool. Oh, I'm going to have to go around oh, the other no. way. You watch baby. No, you watch baby. Oh, you tell me if he's running this way. Okay. Look what has happened to the swimming pool, guys. All the tiles are falling in. The tiles are not where they're meant to be. They are not. The plans for here um, are basically, we are pulling out like a patio here and here and here. And then there's going to be stuff around. And then there's going to be, what's well, going to go from here? the whole way to here then there's going to be a wall the whole way from here so it means that the kids can't get into the pool because obviously we're going to put like a surround up so they can't get into the pool we're changing the color of the front of the house to like a, a beige because you know we're the beige fam here's all getting retiled in like um wood and then round here eventually is going to get grass put down not yet though because you know can't do everything at once this black tile is getting changed to the beige tile and the black on around the pool is also getting changed so yeah it's going to look a good bit different um but i'm excited i think it's really really going to change the look of the house and yeah hopefully you will like it as much as we do of course obviously we'll be showing you in next week's vlog the progress I'm not sure if they're gonna make it round to here next week but we shall see you'll have to tune in to find out what here is a little update of the back on monday we're getting the roof put on which will be exciting and yeah it's just all systems go got doors got everything and yeah over here obviously it's still the shed and then this is just where ladders and stuff are going to live and then that's Jake's work shed and all this is going to be the laundry room which I am so excited about I think it's going to look really good so the builders will be coming on Monday and start well I say starting more like finishing looks good though doesn't it so far so good hello everyone so we've reached the end of the weekend vlog i hope you enjoyed it and do let us know what you thought of um coffee time with oh so mr and mrs murray um hopefully we'll be trying to like add a little something in each week to the vlog but if you really really like it then we might make it a bit longer and a separate a complete separate video so yeah do let us know in the comments down below what you think of coffee time and yeah thank you so much for watching um i really hope you enjoyed don't forget to like subscribe turn on that notification bell so you do not miss next week's weekend vlog and we will be showing you more home updates very exciting bye